My name is Dr. Mary Grumberg, and I'm a pelvic floor and orthopedic physical therapist. This initial episode is to educate you on the foundations of pelvic health, why I'm doing this podcast, and what to look forward to in the future. So I'm going to dive in a bit, explain a little bit about my history, what led me to where I'm at today, and give you guys some foundational work for understanding the pelvic floor and what it actually is, so that way when you listen to future episodes, you'll be able to understand what is going on. So I am a orthopedic and pelvic floor physical therapist. So basically that means I went through a ton of ortho training prior to entering into the pelvic health world, which has helped me tremendously in understanding how the body works. Because if you just go into pelvic health thinking it's just the pelvic floor, you're missing a huge component of the different things that can affect your body. So for example, ankle mobility. So if your ankles are stiff and you go to do a squat, what happens is the squat form can be impaired, which can put sometimes put more stress in your low back and pelvic floor. So overall, it's a good idea to have an understanding of your entire body and not just the pelvic floor. And I strongly believe that this has been a huge advantage to me in the pelvic health world because all of my clients are trying to go back to something, right? Whether it's running, jumping, things like that. And so we have to understand how the body works. I graduated with a doctor of physical therapy from Marymount University in 2011. And right after that, I drove cross country, Marymount's in Arlington, Virginia. I drove cross country and moved to Austin, Texas by myself and have worked for orthopedic physical therapy practices, so corporate practices for many years. And during those years, I did an orthopedic residency training. I sat and passed the orthopedic certified specialist exam. I would teach orthopedic manual courses. And I just felt like there was a huge component missing. And the clients that I have with vulvas, they weren't getting to be 100% like other people would have. And I was thinking how I'm missing a big component. And so what I did is I went out on my own and started my own practice here in Austin, Texas. July will be open five years. So I'm really excited about that. But Overall, I started the practice and the looking into pelvic health because, like I said, a huge component of health was missing. And I found a lot of people did not understand their vulvas. They didn't know what a pelvic floor was. You know, after giving birth, jumping into a workout program with not really having any education on it and, and, and what to look for and how to feel. And a lot of people just feeling lost in their bodies and understanding their bodies in relation to sex, right? So sex feels different after having a baby sometimes. Sometimes it feels different after perimenopause or menopause. And so although this podcast is for people after birth, it could definitely apply to anybody that has not had a child and even into perimenopause and menopause. So you'll hear us talk about different diagnoses in the future episodes. So that way you can have an idea of if you want to share with your friends or even people that may have not had children. So it's just something to think about when you're listening to this podcast. So a little bit more into my journey is in 2019, I was unfortunately diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so basically, if you guys don't know what that means, Hodgkin's lymphoma is a blood cancer. And I could not have been more devastated. It was something that when you're 33, you know, you're not even thinking about that, right? You're thinking about your career. You're thinking about where you're living. You're thinking about your spouse. If you have one or partner, you know, there's just so many things that that didn't even cross my mind. And, you know, it was pretty devastating. And so what happened is I went into chemotherapy. I did eight rounds, lost my hair, gained weight, suffered from extreme anxiety. And soon after I finished my treatment, the treatments went well, I ended up going through a divorce. And right after that divorce, COVID hit. So I went through something so intense in just not even a year. And, and it was something that made me realize I've got to change. I've got to do something to change my life. And what 
really that led me to was understanding the nervous system and how its response is to our daily life. And what I was realizing, I was sitting there in the chemotherapy chair, just looking out the window thinking, A, why did I care so much about what other people think? Why did I focus so much of my life and my self-worth on productivity, getting stuff done? And why did I give myself to so many people that didn't necessarily deserve my my energy or love, right? And that's usually sometimes we call those people like energy vampires or other people that just really want you to succeed, right? And or that aren't people that necessarily want you to succeed. And so I really went through this whole life change and what it did is it helped me realize, oh my gosh, so many people are going through similar issues. It may not be to the extreme of of the health issues that I went through, but really understanding how your nervous system functions in, in, in response to your overall health. Prior to me really diving in and figuring out what was going with, on with my anxiety, because I've struggled with anxiety my entire life, and realizing that there were so many things that I wasn't looking at that really impacted my overall health. For example, doing things to please other people or not doing things because I was fearful of what other people would think. And, you know, when it comes down to it, that is not why we're here, right? We're here to enjoy life and be happy and connect with other people and do things that bring us internal joy. So you might be thinking, what does this have to do with pelvic floor physical therapy? It has everything to do with it. We're going to talk about fight or flight and what that means. Okay. So we have two parts of our nervous system. We have the sympathetic nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system. So these two nervous systems work to help us, our bodies react to stressors or lack of stressors or whatever, right? So they really go back to our basic instincts to keep us alive. So the sympathetic nervous system, it, it, is a, it kicks on when it senses threat. So if we're stressed out, we're running late for traffic, or we're being chased by a wild animal, right? It doesn't matter. Our body does not know the difference. And so what it does is it goes into our primal mode of protect. And so what happens is our heart rate increases, our blood sugar increases, our blood pressure increases, the blood diverts away from the gut and into our arms and legs to run from the threat, right? And so you can see that also increases muscle tension and teeth grinding and butt clenching, all these different things. Wow. The parasympathetic nervous system is the rest and digest system. So this relaxes our muscles. It allows us to sleep. It allows us to digest food. So when we're digesting food, what happens is these two different nervous systems basically all act automatically, right? And so what happens is with the parasympathetic nervous system is it allows us to relax our muscles, calm our nervous system, decrease our heart rate, decrease our blood pressure, and decrease the overall threat that our body is experiencing when we're in the sympathetic nervous system. You'll know you experience this when you are pooping, right? So what happens is when we eat, the food goes into our mouth and into our digestive tract. And essentially what happens is there's peristalsis that occurs. So those are just kind of little movements throughout the gut that help to propel the bowel movements or the feces forward. And when we are not in the rest and digest mode, that stops or slows down. So you could see how that could affect the gut. So when we're in that calm state, the parasympathetic, our bodies can function in a decreased stress mode. And what that does is it helps us to heal. It helps us to regulate our bodies and it helps to decrease pain. It helps to decrease dysfunction because you could t see just from basically what I'm telling you is that if we're chronically in this fight or flight, the body isn't working optimally. And so what happens with that is that we can get constipation, we get clenching of our teeth, clenching of our pelvic floor muscles, we can get pelvic floor tension, which can relate to uh, pelvic pain, pain with sex, impaired orgasms. The other thing that can happen too is when our pelvic floor muscles are tight is we can get a sense of 
fullness, which can also make us feel like we have UTIs. Now, as you're starting to see, if we don't talk to somebody or if we're not looking at our overall lifestyle and questioning things that make us happy and doing things that fuel us versus working out of fear, you could see how that would help our bodies heal and work towards and optimal health. And so that's why I really go back to those things when I work with my clients and helping them understand like, hey, I know you're here for pelvic health, but let's let's roll back. What's work look like? Are you in a partnership? Do you have children? You know, what's going on? What are things? Do you have hobbies? Are you exercising? What is your sleep like? Right. And so if I just ask about the pelvic floor, I'm missing all of these components. And so what I'm finding is that after surviving cancer, I still struggle with urgency culture. I still get fed into it. It's definitely something that I struggle with, but I'm constantly learning how to regulate it, right, and slow down. And what essentially happens is your body, like I said, can work more optimally. And so if you're constantly stressed out, what happens is at the end of the day, you know, you might be zapped from energy. So you may not have time for the kids. You may not have time for your partner. You may not want to see your friends. You may even think sex is completely out the window. But usually that's because if you have been stressed out all day, your body needs some downtime. And if you're crashing hard at the end of every day or looking forward to the weekend, it's likely that things in your daily life may need to change. And it doesn't mean anything drastic, but maybe more boundaries with people that tend to stress you out or boundaries with work or picking up hobbies, whatever that is. That's why we'll talk about the sympathetic and parasympathetic in future episodes. So next, what I want to do is talk to you about the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor consists of three muscle layers and they're shaped like a bowl. And on top of that bowl, you've got your bladder, you've got your vagina on top of that your cervix, and then your uterus, and then your rectum. And they all sit in this small space, okay? And it works in in conjunction with your diaphragm, which is at the base of your ribs. So think of all this as like an egg. The top part of the egg is your diaphragm. The bottom part is your pelvic floor. So as you inhale and breathe through your diaphragm, what happens is that diaphragm comes down and the pelvic floor lengthens. And as you exhale, the pelvic floor contracts and the diaphragm relaxes. And so you can see these work together. However, a lot of times we breathe through our chest and neck, not saying it's necessarily wrong that way. It's just that if we can breathe through our diaphragm, what happens is that actually activates our parasympathetic nervous system, right? So if you're feeling stressed out and you're feeling overwhelmed, just take a couple minutes and breathe through your lower ribs and abdomen. And this might sound easier said than done because it does take a lot of time and practice to work on this. But overall, just kind of understanding, hey, when we are stressed out, what are some things that we can do to kind of calm down our nervous system? So maybe some breath work, right? Some visualization of relaxing your pelvic floor, releasing the tension in your jaw, releasing the tension in your glutes. And so you can see then how all of these areas work directly with our nervous system. And so one of the most powerful things you can do or learn as a human is understanding how to regulate your nervous system. Because I'll give you an example. If you, has anybody ever touched, like touch your shoulder or something when you're really stretched, stressed out or anxious, you might go, whoa, right? Versus if somebody gently taps your shoulder um, or does the same tap and you're not in that fight or flight stage, then you wouldn't react that way. And it's the same thing with pain. So if your nervous system is heightened, so if you're really chronically anxious or stressed out, what that means is so the brain then connects the spinal cord, which then connects to the nerves that go into our arms and legs, right? So you could see if our brain is super active and heightened, that the rest of our nervous system is going to be that way too. So you might find that the days that you're really stressed out, your pain levels increase. There's a direct correlation. And so again, this is why we're going back to the the nervous system and understanding how it regulates. It's not uncommon for me to hear people say that if they're in a really stressed out phase of life, that they start experiencing chronic pain, 
gut issues, trouble thinking, being overwhelmed, not sleeping well. And then you could see how these can correlate into other dysfunctions. And you might be thinking, why has nobody necessarily talked about this? Why has my doctor not talked about this? Well, if you're in the United States, unfortunately, sometimes our providers don't necessarily have the time. And, you know, that's a that's a whole other topic. But in general, that this is one of the major reasons I wanted to start this podcast is because I want to educate you guys on how to understand your body, empower you to move freely in your body, and to get information from this podcast that is unbiased, okay? I'm not going to tell you what to do, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. There's enough of that already on social media. There's a lot of fear tactics. I'm never going to scare you. I'm just going to provide information, whether or not that is scary, which it can be sometimes, but I'm my goal is to give you the information and then you decide what is best for you, right? Evidence-based medicine includes research, the provider's experience, and the patient or the client, okay? So you need looking at all three of those things and determining what is the best fit for you is super vital. And so if you are working with a pelvic floor provider, just making sure that you're feeling heard, you're included in your treatment plan, and that you're not just doing internal work, you're learning how to breathe, you're learning how to move, you're learning how to live again and meet your goals, right? Exercising, pain-free sex, enjoyable sex, all of these things are very reasonable to get to. It's just a matter of learning your body, trusting your body, and then understanding how to regulate your nervous system. And so we're going to dive into a lot of different diagnoses in future episodes. They're going to be fun. I'm going to make them playful. Uh, a few episodes just to kind of give you an example are why am I constipated? Why is my libido so low? Why are my orgasms different after birth? So these are great questions that you might actually be a little embarrassed when you're talking to your provider about, which you know, a lot of the medical world has not been educated on sex. So I could see how that would feel uncomfortable because that's just, unfortunately, the training isn't there to help people ask these questions because I actually don't know if I've ever necessarily been asked anything about my orgasms by or sex or pain with sex or ability to have sex or anything like that in all the years that I've gone to doctors. And so that's just something to kind of think about until, well, until recently, I found some great providers. But in general, if, if you're too embarrassed, feel free to send us some questions and I'll be happy to do a podcast on it. Overall, we're getting a lot of great questions from different people and I really hope that they help you and I hope you share this with your friends and family. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen and I'm looking forward to this journey with you.